The people in charge of Fukushima Daiichi are looking into another leak at the nuclear plant. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company say contaminated water likely leaked from the containment vessel in the building housing reactor number three. Officials say on Saturday, a camera installed on a robot took video of the water flowing through the first floor of the building. They said the stream was about 30 centimeters wide and was pouring into a drain. Officials said it contains levels of radioactive materials that are nearly as high as as the contaminated water accumulating in the basement. The water temperature is about 20 degrees Celsius, almost the same temperature as the water at the bottom of the reactor. TEPCO officials suspect the water used to cool melted fuel in the containment vessel may be leaking out. They're still trying to figure out the source of the problem and how to fix it. Now.org, the War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're broadcasting for the last of three days from Tokyo, Japan. We turn right now to what took place just uh, before we made it to the studio. Hundreds of people gathered outside the official residence of the Japanese Prime Minister to voice their concern about nuclear power. My name is Keiko Kato. I belong to this uh, organizers group, which dem organizes demonstration. And um, we've been here for two years to um, demonstrate against the nuclear power facilities. I think this is a problem of the world, not for just, just Japan. So to, for us, for Japanese to be able to abolish the nuclear facility, this will save the world uh, for the, from the nuclear uh, powers. The, demos, the people have been decreasing because of the weather, but uh, starting from uh, last, last week, uh, more people are coming to the demonstration just because there are some movements in the government to restart some of the nuclear facilities, so people are very afraid that they are going to actually do it. That's why more people are coming out now in this weather. There will be a gubernatorial elections next month, and the one of the issues that we are discussing is uh, either the candidate is uh, for nuclear power plant or against the nuclear power plant, and that will be the uh, serious issue that has to be discussed. And uh, we can send a message from Tokyo to the Japanese government for nuclear policies. We are trying very hard to stop this movement of the restarting. We want you to bring our message to the world to stop um, nuclear, nuclear power plant facilities. That was Kato Keiko, one of hundreds of people protesting nuclear power outside the official residence of the Japanese Prime Minister. The U.S. Defense Department will conduct a health survey of the Navy personnel who took part in relief efforts during the March 2011 earthquake and tsunami in Japan. The House of Representatives passed a budget bill on Wednesday that mandates such a survey. The Senate is expected to pass the bill this week. The bill calls for the Pentagon to submit its findings to Congress by mid-April and those sailors who reported health problems after taking part in the relief efforts. It also asks for details on measures taken by the U.S. military to deal with radiation exposure. Some U.S. sailors, including crew members of the USS Ronald Reagan, have filed a lawsuit in a U.S. court against the operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. They claim they were exposed to radiation from the meltdowns at the plant and now have an increased risk of developing cancer. They blame Tokyo Electric Power Company for failing to provide accurate information about the nuclear accident.
German government officials and cultural figures have enjoyed Japanese food at a reception in Berlin. The occasion was hosted by Japan's government. About 1,000 people attended the event on Friday. It follows the listing of Japanese cuisine and food culture as a UNESCO intangible cultural heritage last month. We believe that the traditional Japanese cuisine is expressly designed and supremely suited to nurturing such ties of friendship between people. Long lines formed for dishes using Japanese produce, including hand-rolled sushi, sweets, and buckwheat noodles. Tempura and other dishes made of fish and produce from Europe were also served. Japanese cuisine is well balanced in all ways. Not just its taste, but also its presentation is great. A tea ceremony performed at the site also drew the attention of visitors. Japanese tea is highly popular in Germany, which is the third largest importer of the product. It's long been considered the drink of choice here in Japan. Now brewers in Nara have begun producing the year's first batch using a method that dates back to Japan's medieval period. Shodakuji Temple is considered the birthplace of sake. The method of soaking rice in water to create shubo yeast used in making sake began hundreds of years ago. The brewers demonstrated the first step of the process on Saturday. They soaked more than 350 kilograms of rice in water from a nearby spring that contains lactic bacteria. The rice was then put in a large kettle and steamed for about an hour. When a cloth covering the kettle was removed, a sweet and sour aroma rose from the pot. The steamed rice will then be put in spring water again to turn it into shubo. I can't wait for the final product. It's great. This traditional refined sake is tasty. It really makes the sake devotees want to come back here every year. The brewers took the shubo to their breweries to make sake from it. The tsunami that ravaged northeastern Japan in March 2011 killed more than 18,000 people. Giant waves have pummeled the region many times in the distant past as well. And residents have tried to leave records of these events. Now some researchers believe the old accounts can help people prevent future disasters. NHK World's Takafumi Terui reports. Yukiko Dazai is an amateur historian. She explores areas in northeastern Japan focusing on geographical names. Dazai says many locations have links to past disasters. This area is called Obunezawa. The name means Big Ship Stream. It's almost three kilometers inland, yet a local legend says that a ship was swept there by a tsunami that occurred long ago. This place is so deep in the mountains that I never believed a ship or a tsunami could reach this far. But on March 11th, the tsunami did reach here, so I realized that the legend was probably true. Dazai says place names may hold messages from people living in the area centuries ago. She asks locals about these tales. I feel very strongly that place names are important. The locals have suffered from tsunamis for many generations. I think these names reflect their experiences. It's not only amateur historians that are studying the past for clues to dangers in the future. Researchers at the National University are digging into the archives to help them prepare for disasters. Last year, Tohoku University established the International Research Institute of Disaster Science. <laughs> Historian Arata Hirakawa is the director. He studies all documents to see how people dealt with past disasters. The tsunami two years ago inundated the Sendai Plain. 
Hirakawa superimposes a map of the flooded areas over one from the 17th century. He found that the 2011 tsunami didn't affect the old main road and nearby villages. He says this knowledge could have helped to lessen the damage from the disaster. It's possible that the highway and towns were built in places that people felt were safe, based on their experience with the many tsunamis that had hit the area. Hirakawa collaborates with other researchers specializing in the science of tsunamis. They are now looking at one that struck in 1611. Researchers had assumed the tsunami was caused by an earthquake with a magnitude of 8.1. But Hirakawa and his team made new findings. They now believe the quake had a magnitude of 8.5. Hirakawa says that if such a massive quake did occur 400 years ago, tsunamis might hit the region more often than previously thought. Hirakawa presents the result of the research in lectures. He hopes to have more opportunities to exchange views with other researchers. If amateur historians dig deeper into the history of disasters in their area and present their research locally, I think our society can develop greater resistance to these catastrophic events. Local residents have left a legacy of their experiences. By uncovering these stories, Dazai and Hirakawa believe they can offer life-saving wisdom to future generations. Snowfall Diamond was once Haley Lane Close's favorite place to be until she started feeling a shooting pain. It actually started in my knee, and then I had the surgery on my knee, and the pain just got worse. It took a CT scan, computed tomography of Haley's hip to find the source of the problem. I thought maybe I just tore something, just an injury playing softball, I'm not sure. And then I found out that I had a birth defect. As a young woman, radiation exposure needs to be especially low to minimize the risk for cancer. Okay, Halo, about to start your test. That's where this new low-dose CT system comes into play. Be sure to hold real still. CT technologist well, Jeff O'Keefe says it drastically out. reduces radiation exposure. Just recently, the FDA has approved new dosing technologies, which we were able to get with our new scanner and it has significantly reduced radiation doses to the body. We're approaching now doses close to the equivalent of regular x-ray, which is unheard of. We're doing hearts at three millisieverts. We're doing hips at 1.3. Reducing radiation exposure by as much as 60% means a lower chance of radiation damage. Damage to your organs, to your skin, to your reproductive area, to your uh, nervous system. And the scanning exposure was concentrated to the small area in question, limiting potentially harmful radiation and giving Haley peace of mind. It's one less thing to worry about. I'm glad to know what exactly the problem is now and to help figure all that out.